It's very brightly colored and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. We want to be free to, to do what we, we want to do. We're Muhammad Ali and Sonny Barger, the president of Hells Angels. This is 109.5. Hey, Wills, welcome to the podcast, mate. Will, Will Hartley, hey. William Hartley, Wills Hartley. Which, hey, man, which is it? Uh, let's go for William Hartley today. <laughs> William, William yeah, Hartley today, yeah. cool. <laughs> no, Will Hartley, yes, yes. Cool, well, yeah, welcome. Thanks for taking the time. It's, um, yeah, your morning, well, lunchtime there, right? So, and yeah, my first first podcast with um, the 1095 pod, the 1095 podcast, so, which I'm doing from my house, which you obviously, you've been up here before, but um, yeah, for, for everyone watching, you're obviously my brother, so the guinea pig in, in this new podcasting um, podcasting experiment. But um, apart from that, what else? Do you want to give a quick intro on what you do? Um, before I, before I jump yeah. into the questions. Well, I do photography and mainly documentary photography. So that's where my sort of passion is. So, uh, you know, doing, going off and doing documentary projects, but then I also get some commercial work through my agency. Um, but then I'm also still working uh, in doing lighting and, di and, and as a digital operator on, um, on jobs and just kind of, doing it all really obviously the the end goal is just to kind of do photography but i've even started doing moving image stuff as well and getting excited about that and it's kind of um just working with it all really and how have you so you've been obviously the world's been freaking crazy now for six months but um and i imagine in a job like yours it's been hugely disrupted but you're in this studio now so you're working again like what have you been you, you've been massively disrupted by what's going on you're back at work you know, how's the effect? Been? Yeah, so it's, I suppose, the way it's, been, you know, as soon as it happened, the lockdown came in, like everything, everything stopped. So all jobs completely disappeared. And that was kind of scary because it was also a realization of how, um, well, it was just like, well, you know, we're sort of, is our industry even you know, worth it? Like it's sort of, what do we even give, <laughs> what do we even give back? And so, yeah, it just disappeared. And I've had some, I've had some work afterwards but before the pandemic you know I've been uh, you know had a nice photography job and then that got cancelled and then after the pandemic I'm I've got some jobs doing lighting and digging so that, that's a kind of working with photographers which um it's almost like sort of taking a step back but again like pre-coronavirus I was you know sort of almost like oh you know I want to just want to do photography jobs and now I'm just I, you know I had two weeks working with photographers as doing lighting and I was just so grateful to have the work <laughs> because just yeah, like right not working for so long and then just thinking oh my god like, there's definitely times where i've thought like oh you know started to get you know almost get i don't want to say bored of it because it's still nice to 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 work in working on these jobs it's still exciting but you know it's always like oh, i'm trying to be a photographer and now it's just like right i've really got to you know just think about what i'm doing and also whenever i get paid on jobs i throw it at my projects and like i might buy some new equipment and you know i'd, I'd always take a sort of risk so i went to india before um, actually before the lockdown, so in January, uh, went with Joe, so I went with my twin brother and we I just sort of used it as a, a time to shoot a personal project. However, I didn't really have loads of money. I put it on a credit card and I was like, oh, you know, it'd be all right. <laughs> but again, I, sort of through this pandemic, I thought I can't, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> so it's definitely kind of like, I've got to, you know, be a bit more sort of careful with my money, I guess, because if, you know, if it, if it happened again, if we go through another lockdown although i don't know if it will be the same as it has been i feel like it might if it goes another lockdown i feel like it might be very much like this this area is in a lockdown i don't know if it will be so big i don't know i don't think the um yeah i don't think the i don't think the world can afford to completely lock down i mean it's gone through it and i i don't know so much about the uk i'm involved in the uk business wise but i i think it'd be very hard to um you know, to, to lock down properly because I think people just have to work as well. Otherwise there's going to be a lot more problems in the virus, I think. So, um, yeah. Yeah. But I think you are, so. I think, sorry, what were you say? No, I was, I was just going to say, I think there's, um, there's, there's a, there is a point as well where, yeah. What, you know, how are people's, you know, other, other issues being affected because of it. So there's, a, you know, people's mental health and other illnesses that aren't being treated you know, and where, where does it out, outweigh the kind of, I guess this, that's why it's such a complicated thing to try and deal with, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed it is. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully over soon, we'll see. Um, 
I had a question written down and something I wanted to ask you about. You kind of touched on it there, actually. You said you went on a trip to India and you took on a personal project when you're there. And I know a few photographers, obviously Will that we're friends with, another Will, um, who I've known for years. And have, he comes up here and he, I mean, he's just, he lives his passion. I mean, he takes time off work and all he's doing is running around with his camera. But how have you as a creative and a photographer balanced that um, passion of photography and the stuff you love with the commercial side that I imagine sometimes is photography, but not what you love, you know, where do you find the balance with that? If you have at all, and you know, the stuff that earns you a crust versus the stuff you really love doing. Well, I think that's, well, it's an interesting question. Cause I think there is this sort of, um, you know, like there's the personal projects, which I've done for years, even since I was, since I started doing photography, 16, 17, you know, I've always just done projects. Um, and it, whatever, you know, whatever job I did, it was always like, you know, when I worked in, I, I graduated university and I worked in Weatherspoons and I took two weeks off to go and hang out with my friends in London who were squatting and keep photographing them. And like, that's, that was what I'd always, I've always focused on. And then, you know, moving to London and assisting and seeing like, oh, this sort of commercial world, that, that's a way to make some money. And, you know, of course, from when you first start photography, you just want to be a photographer and make art and try and sell it. <laughs> but it's just, it's much more complicated than that. And of course, there are people who can do that. But it's much, um, well, it's just much harder. So there, you know, there's trying to balance it. I guess what I'd say is, you know, getting jobs in photography or working as an assistant, using that money to then fund my personal work. That's how I do it. And then you know, of course, hope, you know, hopefully then the, the person work kind of people then see that person work and then they want to use you for their, for their shoots because they like your person work. But I think there's also this sort of fine line where, you know, a purely commercial photographer, they, you know, they'll, they're going to be really busy because their personal projects are also going to be very commercial. And then there's the other end where someone who's just like an artist and they're just making projects for art and they've got no interest in commercial world. And I think I'm sort of, I call it no man's land where I'm sort of in this funny middle place where so I'm shooting my personal projects and then I might get some jobs that I like and then I like to, to show those but then I might do loads of other jobs that I don't necessarily want to show because I don't know, they, you know they look too cheesy or they look too smiley and you know not it's not really how I want my my I guess my look to or my own work to, to, to be seen but I guess that also comes with a what would you call it you know it means that I'm still, I'm so attached to how my own work looks that I, I guess I'm probably not as busy as I could be because I'm, I'm also not showing everything. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I think yeah. it's very similar to what I've experienced in the, in the movie, I mean, or in the, in the media, TV, movie industry, and, but probably more defined as being kind of extreme, whereas guys wanting to break into film and all they're doing is adverts and, yeah, I mean, that's, it's the same kind of thing. I think there's probably more opportunities in photography to kind of earn a living and then go and focus on your passion. And then hopefully that, you know, one creeps over to the other. But yeah, it makes perfect sense. I, I just see it as the ongoing challenge, really, when, you, when you're lucky enough to follow what you love doing as your, as your profession, but then you end up doing probably a lot of stuff you didn't imagine doing this, you know, that there's not that documentary photography, which I know you love, right. Which I'm going to ask you about as well, but yeah, yeah it makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's just, um, it is a funny one as well, because like there's, there's also like, you know, the, there's the jobs that you'd be happy to show. And, you know, really what I, you know, it's something I thought about over the pandemic a lot about was, so I, you know, through the sort of pandemic at the beginning, I kind of thought, oh, I'm going to try and make a bit of, uh, project about this you know it's interesting it's such a strange time but what I found was you know just going to the shop and queuing and putting a mask on I was so anxious I like I found the whole thing so sort of like I was like how can I like try and make a project about the sort of outside world when we're not really supposed to be out that much anyway but it I can't go and ask someone you know can I take your portrait you know because I was feeling so anxious <laughs> just like so actually I found that I found that I took I took photos of Chiara, who I've always taken photos of, so my girlfriend Chiara, and, um, and then I took photos of the flat and just the marshes near where we were. And I found that really great. I found this great sort of escapism. And sometimes it was just like an hour in the evenings, we'd go out and I'd take pictures. And it was almost like that, 
that's what I really love doing. I love taking pictures and I love doing my projects without any kind of like making sure I photograph it in a certain way, just doing it completely how I want to. And I was probably more experimental with this project than, I, than any project I've done. And I was, and it was, but, but it wasn't like a, I was, I wasn't trying to make a pandemic project because I don't think it is like that. It was more of a, it's just the way that I could sort of focus on this time. Um, but it did also make me think like, this is what I love doing. So as long as I can find ways to, to make some money, which can keep me going and I can keep doing personal projects, I think that's the, that's sort of my, my key goal. <laughs> and, but that's why the commercial world is so, you know, if, if you can get some of those really amazing, you know, those pretty big jobs, then it's great because they can pay really well. Yeah, it's interesting. Just, just on the stuff you chatted a bit at the beginning there, because and I think we all felt this like kind of anxiety at the beginning of this pandemic, which was probably March, right? I think when, when it all got kind of extreme and it's interesting when I hear you say that, cause you work in media, right? You, and how much do you think, I don't know where you, you know, you, where you get your news from or the, how you research, but you, you know, um, how much of that do you think is the reality of we should be worried or the reality of we consume so much media now that, we are conditioned by what we're being told every day. And obviously there is, it's always been like that with TV, but the internet these days is just so in your face. And you know, that, how much do you think that, that um, anxiety was driven by just an overflow of the messaging, you know? I mean, it's like everywhere, every day for, for weeks, right? I don't know if you even thought about yeah, this. Just I, think, it. I was thinking about it because you're in media, interestingly. Yeah, well, I think, I guess, um, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think, like, I, don't, I suppose I don't really work in the media in the sense of, like, I don't really shoot for newspapers or anything. So, but I think, you know, if, I, if I'm looking at it from, um, you know, we, we are kind of, you know, it is everywhere, isn't it? But I don't know. I suppose it's just all on, on social media. Like, I don't have a TV, but it doesn't matter anymore if you have TV or not, because it's just on your phone, isn't it? So, it's, you know, it is everywhere. But I think, I guess the anxiety came from just, like, you know, it was like, well, we, you know, trying to not sort of, I knew that we, you know, you'd go out, you'd go outside, there was people in masks, we had to be careful. And that was enough for me to just feel like, yeah, just, to, I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to make a project about those of, those of people knowing that they were anxious, if, if that makes sense. That was my kind of yeah. uh, reflection on it. But, but also I, I did, I ended up deleting, like I had Twitter and Instagram on my phone. I deleted them off my phone because yeah, I was just like, I was one, I was thinking, what am I doing? Just like looking at, just consuming stuff images and pictures and things on Twitter and like follow you know Boris Johnson would say something and I go, go on Twitter and sort of see what people are moaning about him and just you know it's, and I was just like what am I doing <laughs> what am I doing this so I just like I actually got rid of it and it was really nice to not have it on my phone and that I definitely think helped and I I kind of you know there was a beginning part of the of the pandemic which you know was just trying to understand it all and and find out how to, to deal with it. But there was, a, I kind of got in a bit of a routine by the end of it of doing things. And I think that helped. And also just trying to not read so much about it, you know, knowing that it's there, but trying to not read too much and get, you know, just almost like, you know, yeah, it's just gonna make you more anxious, isn't it? <laughs> what, what was like the, in, in Thailand? What, what, uh, in Thailand, it's been, I mean, I remember back in March, just just because everyone was anxious, I felt the same, and I was like, "What's going on?" And there was massive panic. But I mean, we've been very fortunate here. The the I think the government, I mean, it's a military style government anyway. So the way they deal with things is is in a fashion that is right. We're just going to lock down, and you know, it it helped a lot of people. I think, as in, it helped the spread of the virus being contained. At least, as far as I know. Also, the testing hasn't been so widespread but um but we've been fortunate here i mean it's it's um we haven't had a problem there's been like 60 cases you know there's probably a lot more than that but at the same time the hospitals haven't been full um so yeah we're very lucky we're very fortunate we haven't had a problem of course the the problem that we have had is the economic the economic situation and um the well-being situation and yeah, the mental stress and that, there's plenty of other ricochet issues, I think, that are um, probably going to be way more devastating than, than the virus ever was. But I mean, personally, I'm very fortunate. We've been fortunate. And so I'm speaking to her, you know, no. Yeah, we, we've had very little to worry about, but we were locked in here in Pi for 
uh, four months until recently. Couldn't leave the state, so I couldn't go to Chiang Mai. So didn't didn't worry me. But I mean, I say that because obviously that had a that's that's going to have had an impact on the reduction of the spread and things like that. So they were very strict here, incredibly mm. strict, considering how you know, supposedly low the um, you know potential infection rate was and everything else. So yeah. Um, and you're sort of in the middle of middle of nowhere there anyway, as, as, as well, aren't you? So it's kind of easier to kind of get be in an isolation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the ideal place to be isolated, man. We're in a, you know, we're in the fields. I mean, it's, you know, we're yeah, like we have solar and we don't quite have water, but off the well, we have some some water off the stream system. The only thing we don't have is drinking water. But I don't know. I'm not a doomsday prepper. I didn't need to go to the level of mm you know, kind of being locked in and prepping. I think there'll be a lot more doomsday preppers in the world now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely changed things. Um, I was going to ask, Sam, I don't want to forget it, but the, yeah, what is the project you've done then? What, so you've worked on a personal project throughout this, have you, or a number of projects? Yeah, well, it's, um, just, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a project um, about, I said it's about me and my girlfriend. It's pretty more about my girlfriend and the flat and the area surrounding it. And it's just, it's just these, this sort of ice, it's about isolation, I guess. And, and we'd go, when we'd go for a walk in the evenings and it kind of was almost just as the light was going down and, you know, it was this sort of, it was almost like suddenly we were just in our own world because we weren't really seeing anyone. And because and what was in, you know, I, I've always found, yeah, I need to load so many of my projects that I've done. I mean, years ago, but most of my projects were done in the UK. And then I started like doing all these projects that were going, going away, going to India, going to America and, and, you know, feeling the need to kind of go somewhere. Whereas suddenly I was just on my doorstep and, you know, in fact, every photographer in, I guess, the world or who was going through the pandemic was like, you know, all you have is, you know, you're, you're very, you know, you're, you're the, where you're living and the very close surroundings and, and this hour time that you can go outside or, you know, that's all you have. And so it was, it meant that I kind of, I had to kind of think differently and shoot differently, but because of these sort of restrictions, I actually photographed in a much more creative way. And, you know, it made me think, think differently and think, you know, yeah, it made me look at things a lot differently. And so if a place that I'd lived for, I don't know how long I lived there, like over two years, I, you know, I hadn't really taken that many pictures there. And I used to always take pictures all the time anyway, but for some reason, you know, go to Italy with my girlfriend and we take pictures there or we'd go away somewhere, but I didn't really take pictures in the flat. And so it was like, well, this is all I've got. And actually, you know, it, it was kind of interesting to see what, what I could get from it. And I, mean, I think I'm just really happy with how the photos look and, um, you know, just show you, you know, I did it all on digital and didn't cost me anything. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. So the project's about, you know, the project's about, um, isolation and, and I was also writing I was like journaling every day and so I've taken um I took segments of the journal and made a sort of poem out of it to put with the project and I called it uh, while you were sleeping and it was this sort of I guess it's quite a dreamy project really you know was, it's interesting so, how like well it's interesting how you said um yeah in a way you were more free to to kind of take on the project if you want I mean that might just be the case that you weren't working as much I suppose you had the time but yeah, it's good that you got to connect with your, with your real kind of passion of photography. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some ev some evenings where, you know, the, the light was nice, and I mean, the light was quite nice anyway. But I was like, Come on, we've, got, we've got to, you know, <laughs> we've we got to go, <laughs> we've got to get out, as if like this is the last light you're gonna get. You know, you ha we have to go now. It's like, you know, it's curious. It's like we we live here. It's gonna be there tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's just like. <laughs> Suddenly this sort of like, you know, and I was getting really excited. I'd go out and like, I started photographing just like the, 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 just the, the leaves and the, the, the fauna and just the light falling on it. And I mean, you know, maybe it's cliche, but I just, it's something we'd go for a walk there anyway. And probably when we were walking there before, I was just in my head thinking about other things. And suddenly I was like really looking about at my surroundings and getting excited, you know, just to go not very far, you know, literally just two minute walk away from where we live to the marshes you know, photograph my girlfriend, photograph the area and, and yeah, something that, you know, I, yeah, it really excited me, which, yeah, you know, that was um, something I could kind of focus on th throughout the day as well and make me sort of keep creative. 
yeah it's cool i think lots of lots of people have had maybe not epiphanies is a big word but i think just because of the change in structure and environment and everything i think a lot of people have had kind of breakthroughs and moments of probably enjoyment in such a weird time so um, yeah. on a di slightly yeah. different topic because uh, I, I, I wanted to ask you just about the mechanics of the industry actually or, i mean the devices like you've been through you've you've lived as a photographer through massive shifts in what everyday people can do with content so um, I'm pretty sure you have anyway. I know Will has, um, you know, what you learned at uni and then came out with and how things like smartphones and digital and how has that changed your approach to photography? You know, can anyone now, you know, I asked this a presumptuous question because I know the answer to a way that they can't, but mm. can, can anyone who wants to be a photographer have enough money by the right device? Because the equipment has massively changed, right? Or has it? I don't know. You're, you're well, yeah, younger. I think... So I think um, sometimes I think I'm only catching up to people who have who are, are already a step ahead because, you know, I, so I learned on film and when I was at college, I shot on film and when I was at university, I shot on film that we printed in the darkroom and and I, that was just the process I was used to. And I was used to that process so much that I just didn't want to do a project on digital. I, I saw if I do a, do a job, I'll do that on digital. But if it's my own work, I do that on film, but of course then, you know, film then starts becoming more and more expensive, you know, so from, I mean, it's so expensive now, like uh, the, that I ended up finding that I wasn't taking as much many pictures because I was like, well, I can't, you know, I, I've only got a few, few films or, but my, my point being that now, you know, it's only now in the last year that I've, I've kind of thought I need to just shoot, shoot more digital and kind of catch up <laughs> because the, so you were shooting yeah. on film for a long time, were you? You were still shooting. Yeah, on, shoot, shooting on like, film, even, even like, even commercially, or just for your documentary stuff and your your own stuff. Not for not for jobs, not for commercial, but just my own personal work was like, you know, I I will do it on film. So, and but now I think you know I've bought this. I've got a little camera now, just a, it's Fuji XT2, and I bought it because I actually bought it because I was like you know, I, I used to take pictures all the time with my cam, like my cameras, you know, mainly medium format or I had a 35 mil and I was just, you know, shooting everything, shoot my, shoot my family and shoot my friends. And then it sort of got to a point where I thought, I haven't, I just don't do that anymore. Like I, I think of a project and I do the project and I just I'd stopped taking pictures just out and about. So I bought a little mirrorless camera and actually I just found, I got re I loved it because I was like, wow, I can just take pictures with me all the time everywhere. And I can, it's just really small camera. and it sort of changed how I sort of, well, it just meant that I was like shooting a lot more and it wasn't costing me so much, you know, so do, when I was doing these projects, um, I did this long, you know, a long-term project on the spring break culture in America. I'd go over somewhere. I went to Cancun one year and then I went to Miami the following year. And then last year I went to the redneck mud park spring break weekend, which was slightly different. Um, but my, my point being, I shot it all Slightly film. different from Cancun. <laughs> yeah, yeah I think like... it was so different, yeah. It turned into its own project in the end because it was so different. But um, yeah. my point being, I, I guess I'd, I'd go, I'd fly over with my backpack full of 60, 70 rolls of film. You know, I've got my, my film cameras just like, you know, trying to make it, you know, sweating as I get to the extra machine that it's going to damage the film, although they tell you that it's not. You still panic about it anyway. You know, and then it, to come back and you know after shooting it all like in hindsight i look and i think oh, i kind of missed things i missed moments because you know the light was going down you know i was running that low on film um you know I, you know at night time i was trying to shoot medium format with flash but the setup i had was just a bit impractical and i just look at it now and i think if i would just taken this new fuji camera that i've got with some little lenses i could have you know saved myself some money because <laughs> it's you know the process I don't, basically, you know, I, I do love film, but I think what I'm trying to say is, I guess, to answer your question, I don't know if I've sort of gone off tangent, but no, no, I, 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 I guess I'm trying, I'm trying to catch up with myself. Like technology keeps on moving so fast, and I think, wow, I've, I've been really stuck in a film world of like, I have to do it like this, and I think actually, I don't mm -hmm. think this way of working is is helping me move forward, and so it's really also really liberating to be like, oh, I, I'm just going to do projects on this digital camera and I can grade it in a certain way and that's quite exciting and I can try things and be more experimental and I guess from from using film 
I used to think that was the way of, you know, I almost felt like I only, I'd only feel confident when I had the film camera and, and that sort of changed a bit. So technology just keeps on advancing. And I guess, so it, what your question was like, can anyone be a photographer? I yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's obviously, I know the answer is no, but, but I, you know what I mean? It's a slightly facetious question because <laughs> it used to well, yeah, be about so, understanding yeah. the equipment and it still is a bit, but yeah, just the, yeah. So yeah, go on. Well, no, but I think there's, there's so many, it is a difficult question as well because there is so many different ways you could be a photographer. You know, some people who are like Instagram photographers and that's a world that I just don't, I still don't know and I still don't understand it enough. You know, but they, you know, they're, they're making they make well, a lot of money. money. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand Instagram, but, but then, but is it the, is it the individual or is it the photograph? I mean, I suppose it's a bit of both, right? But what, what is an Instagram photographer? Uh, well, I don't know. That's the thing. I'm, if I knew, I probably would have jumped on it a bit and got, got some of that Instagram, uh, Instagram money. But, um, I mean, I guess like a, they're sort of influencers when I, when yeah, I think right. about it. And I think in a way, sometimes people, you know, I spoke to someone who was, I think they were about 18 and they were asking about how to get into photography, but they were really talking a lot about Instagram. And I think that's also, a well, it's like, that's how people, maybe they, I could be wrong, but it feels like that's how maybe a younger generation sort of see it. It's like photography is Instagram, you know? And that's a shame as well, because I don't think it is at all. But I see myself wrapped up in it sometimes, you know, going away, shooting these projects and then you stick it on Instagram. But it's just, I think it's just a platform for photographers. It's a platform which just keeps, you know, you can show people what you're, what you're doing. And I think as long as you just use it for that and not get too wrapped up in it, then, you know, then it's okay. You know, it's, it's okay. Can you, but, um, can, you tell a, can you tell a difference between a photo that's taken with film and a photo that's digitally taken? Like, or does it make no difference once you run it through filters and presumably even photos taken with film and then uploaded digitally anyway, right? Or yeah, I think that's the thing. I think now I, I feel like I've got a for me, I've gotten an you know, I feel like I can grade it and make it look quite filmy. Um, but many, you know, like I, I again, I've because I've shot a film for ages, I was so I was so against it. I was like, nothing is gonna, nothing's gonna match film. And the thing is, film is beautiful, so but I think you know, it's if if I had loads of money and I, I think I'd just yeah, I'd love to keep shooting on film. You know, it'd be like that, you know, I still like to do this, do this, do some more projects on film. But I think, yeah, you're right. If, if you show two, two photos next to each other, I think this was a bit of a test I did actually. Yeah. I shot, I did a project in London about the breakdancing scene, or the breaking scene. Um, and I, sh I started off on film. No, sorry, I started off on digital because I thought, right, I'll, I'll shoot them all digitally because it's a good way to kind of get to, get to know them. So I, I, I was going to these practice sessions in Stratford and, you know, I was just shooting lots of stuff on digital, lots of stuff. And I was almost just like, this is just, you know, me. I'm just shooting, just shooting just to get to kind of know them. But when I'm, you know, when I'm kind of in there a bit, then I'll start, start the real stuff on film. And I started doing stuff on stuff on film and it was so difficult because I was trying to shoot dancers moving and the yeah. light was really low. I started pushing the film. So that's like, I was like using 400 speed film and I was trying to push it to stops to kind of, so I could, you know, you shoot it in lower light. And I'd get it and it would work. I'd go, oh yeah, this is it, this is how I'm gonna do it. But basically all of this sort of stuff, and actually I went back and then I kind of finished the project on digital. So I just thought, really, I'm trying to stick to this thing of film because I, I, I like it, but really it's like this film is not the film is not the right tool for this job. So actually it's yeah. like using using it for the using the right tool for the job. And that's kind of what I, I got out of that. And I also found I, I showed a few people. The project and it was a mix of digital and film and i said oh you know which which is which and no one could tell which was film or digital and if anything that was a bit of, a bit of a thing for me of like may, maybe it doesn't matter so much anymore and um yeah i'm sure it's you know i, I do this so i get obsessed with something and i'm like this is my new obsession i'm as you know in a year's time i'm probably going to be back on the film <laughs> and i'll be it's completely disagreeing with what i'm saying but um I think my, my, I suppose the main conclusion is like, instead of just thinking, shoot everything on film, it's like, think about what the project is. And, you know, if film is going to um, elevate that project uh, or it's going to make it more difficult, and if it's going to make it more difficult, you know, maybe use digital because that, that might be a way to elevate it and be more experimental for that. And, you know, even after doing, you know, this was a couple of years ago that I was doing this project, 
and even after shooting for over 10 years, still, still having these kind of things, it's always constantly learning and constantly, yeah, having these sort of new realizations. Yeah. I am. Anyway. Um, I was speaking. It's just well, it's funny coincidence. I was speaking to a friend today that I haven't spoke to in a while in in Sydney. He's not. He's just a hobby photographer, but he's just bought this camera. He just posted some photos yesterday, and I was like, man, he got. It's like his first day out with this camera. He got a photo of a sperm whale jumping out of the water. I was like, oh, wow. and it looked like something out of National Geographic. But and I phoned him today, and he, but yeah, I mean, it was an eight thousand dollar camera, and it's designed for it's a sports photography camera that the professionals use but to your point of it depends what job you're doing i mean frankly he said i think he said it you, you know better than me I'm sure it reels off like 25 shots a second so and i mean yeah when you're yeah, I mean, that, you're yeah shooting, that is very good if you're, if you're shooting a i mean if you're shooting a rugby game or something or a football game i mean you can't be you know if you're trying to use film it must be just a nightmare and you're just trying to get those that one shot for the newspaper or the magazine or whatever i mean you know, and you're loading up film, yeah. and you've got guys running across the pit. So there is massive practicality in the digital age, right? Yeah, exactly. I think for me, it just took me a, it took me a while to sort of start to like it, and I think it was just because I was, you know, going going to digital, I had to start experimenting again, and then I found a camera that I like using, and the camera that I've got, it looks a bit like a film camera, and so it's almost like if I'm tricking myself a bit, and uh, if that's helping me, then fine, it's, it's helping me. But you know, also. Yeah, cameras these days are so you know uh, the the cheaper ones are still really really good. That they yeah. they can do so you know they can do so much. Well, so, so can phones. That's the mad thing. Like phones. Yeah. I look at some of the pictures that some some takes on our iPhone. My iPhone's got a crappy camera, but the new iPhones. I mean, just it is crazy. I mean, they're not distance phones, obviously, or sorry, distance lenses, but just the quality of some of the photos is unreal. Yeah. Like a, yeah, no, um, what, are, yeah. what, what are, you've touched on some of your projects, but any, what are some of the interesting projects you've done in the past kind of 12, 24 months? I know when we talked about doing the podcast, I was talking about you being at the G8 or something and you, you were like, that's like 18 years ago. So just <laughs> yeah. go, goes to show how <laughs> old was, I'm getting, how quick I'm getting old. But yeah, what, well, that was, what, yeah, what, 2005 what, that was. Um, yeah, so let's, so let's not, we don't need to go back to that, but you must, you've done other, some other interesting stuff since, right? Yeah, although, do you know what, I would like, going back to sort of that time, there was a project I did about um, some, my friends who was, in, who was squatting in London, and I spent sort of five or six years photographing them. And then it was so long ago, and like, I, you know, I've always loved, I always loved that project. And then only recently, I, a publication... I've got a photo, to, um, I've got a photo in here that you gave me, so... Sorry oh, to really? butt in. Okay. Was, so yeah, so I remember no, it really well. Like you gave me a photo, I think, and signed it for years ago. But yeah, talk about that. I'd love to know more. I mean, I, no, but I just, it, well, I think that that sort of project is always like for me. I feel like that was the, the sort of purest project I've ever done, and and I spent so long on it, and I felt so part of everything that was happening with it. And but because I, you know, moved on trying to do new projects, and I guess now I'm a bit, you know, I'm more technical now than I was then. But I, so a publication wanted to feature the work and it was just nice to have like, I thought, oh, wow, so, you know, wanted to do, do a feature on it. So it meant that I, I thought, well, I've got all these old scans, but everything then I just would scan it and I'd retouch on the original files. Like I just didn't know what I was doing properly. So I've had to rescan everything, but that meant that I kind of just got loads of negatives and I rescanned it. I found loads of images that I'd originally, originally just sort of not even looked at, but just going through it, I just thought, you know, I really do love that project. and. Yeah. And I haven't scanned all of the work yet, and I and I've got like just folders up here. Just of, give um, us a brief well, on the project. Wills. Give us a brief on the project, just so people that are watching and, and oh, can, so they find, this, can, they, can they find out? Can they view this project? And obviously, I know about yeah, it. It's on my so it's on my web it's on my website called um and it's called uh, Squatting in London, and it's yep. it's essentially about five years photographing my friends that started squat, squatting in London, and it was how they. They, you know, they just started like, I, I was a couple of people I was friends with at college and then they went to this squat in Tufnell Park and they were telling me about this, this squat. I didn't even know what a squat was, but I just was like, wow. And I, I went up, so I went up with them one day and they'd go to this squat on a Thursday or a Tuesday and, and in this, there was this sort of, I guess they would go, they were like going juggling there and stuff. So I went along with them and I just, um, I found it fascinating because I just thought they were in this huge, it was a huge old abandoned church 
yet it was they were living there and they were living there for free and i just thought how is this and it just that just started my obsession with it and then so as they kind of just they were hanging out in squats to then opening up squats and living all over london and then i became friends with other people in that sort of community and i saw i guess i just followed followed this sort of journey when i was at university i was i so i started it just as i'd started university in wales in newport where i did documentary photography and so i I just would constantly go back to London and hang out and make this work. And um, yeah, that, I guess, you know, any project we had at uni, I'd somehow squeeze it in so I could just photograph my friends squatting in London. And, um, but as it was, you, know, want, I, I, you did a book, a book on it, right? Or a, I did, do a, I did do a book at the time, but I think I'd, I, I'd like to revisit it because yeah. I had a, I had a way of, I wanted certain images I liked then. Now when I look at it, I see other images that I've completely just ignored and some that show the space a bit more. And, um, and I'd yeah, so I, I, again, I've got loads of folders up there of just negatives that I just want to go through was it, and. Was sorry? this the one, was this the one that your tutor at uni kind of dismissed? Do I remember that story? I, think, right? I don't think they, they didn't really like it at university. They, I think once said, oh, you, you just like the lifestyle, which I kind of, at the time was like, well, yeah. <laughs> Of course, like I'm fascinated by it. Like, what's wrong with that? Um, I mean, like, should I, I've got, should I show you a picture of, is this a video thing? Should I show you a picture? Can you bring it? If, yeah, well, bring I've got, it um, just, no, just because I've got this. this oh, right, okay. Well, yeah, because there's one of the pictures, this, Max, this magazine published it, and it was just really nice. That's the one, I think that's the photo I have in the house. So, yeah, so I've, this, you, I've got that framed, yeah, but go on. Yeah, but I, I think just this magazine asking to do a feature on it. Um, prompted me to sort of want to, wanting to revisit it. And that's yeah, something else I want to kind of um, spend some time on when, it, when it, I mean, we've had loads of time recently, but I need to sort of scan all the negatives on a decent scanner. And just it, as, it's, as it's so so old, it's not so old, but it is, it's over 10 years old. The last time I, so that project was around 2005, 2006 to about 2010 or 11, 2011 probably. And then I, then the squatting, squatting laws changed in London. So, you can't squat in residential buildings anymore. And that's just changed everything. And now when I look at these pictures, I just think, wow, like what an actual, like having that access at the time, you know, I almost think oh, I didn't know if I did it justice because <laughs> it was such a, it was an amazing time for me as well. Just like being amongst this sort of scene. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'd, so I would like to, I'd like to do a, a, an updated book about it uh, with, and looking at through all the, the negatives and finding images that, I had once sort of not really thought much about. So that was, well, that was one project what's, that I... What is this sorry? magazine as well? What's the magazine you just oh, held up? Just well, so it's just called Thank Mono. You. I mean, I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard of it. They, they just got in touch and... And so that's it's current? A, yes, it's about uh, uh, um, affordable urbanism. So you can... Cool. Um, yeah, I'll send you a link to it. I'll cool. send you a link to it. But that was a project I did years ago and but more over the last few years, I started a project about the spring break culture. And so I went yeah, to, awesome. I went to different spring breaks over the, over three years. And I mean, I was in two minds about continuing, continuing it. I, was, I think, well, I don't think I can, obviously I can't do it this year or I don't know how, how spring break will work now with, a, with this sort of virus going around. But um, I went to, yeah, I went to Cancun one year and, that was just sort of fascinating anyway, because so I stayed in an Airbnb in downtown Cancun and I'd get a bus to the hotel district. And then I'd just have to find this. There were, no, I, I knew that there was this hotel called the Grand Oasis Hotel, which was like this mecca of spring break. So that's where all the spring breakers would go. So to get in, you, you know, you had to pay loads of money to stay in a, stay in a hotel amongst it. Or you could buy these day passes, which were about like eighty dollars to get to get in, which is quite expensive. Um, uh, yeah, I sort of, and I just would get in there and kind of you know roam around and ask people like, "Hey, I'm doing a project about spring break. Can I um can I just hang out with you for a bit, <laughs> take some pictures?" Um, and it was yeah, it was just kind of a mad, exciting project because it was so visual. It was just so you know, it was young college kids going wild, and I I, I found it just um. You know, I wanted to do a project where I could just go somewhere and and have so many that has so many different elements to it. So they would have loved jumping in front of the camera, of course. So that would have been easy, I imagine. Was that quite an easy one to to get people in front of the camera and stuff? 
yeah, because so many projects that I did in the past was actually so much harder to kind of convince people or to it take took time before people would just be like, yeah, yeah, sure, that's okay. Or, you know, like sometimes getting that, if you're not, if it's not, if you're not photographing um, your friends or family, you know, if you're photographing strangers and you're trying to do a project about someone, it can take a while to kind of get that, um, you know, that intimacy and, and, and so someone to allow you to take those pictures. Whereas spring break, I mean, sometimes it was almost too much that they wanted their pictures taken. <laughs> I was just like, I can't, it's on film and I can't, you know, I, I, you know, it's too, you know, it's, yeah, it was too much. Um, but yeah, that was nice to kind of go there and, and do this project, but it was difficult in Cancun because it was so like everywhere you went, it was like, I, I imagined when I think of spring break, I don't know if, if this is how you see it. I just thought spring break is just a big beach party and that's where, you know, people just go to yeah, and it's, yeah. it's not very much money, but actually Cancun was just, everything was just money. Like just to have to pay to go into these hotels and, and pay to get in anywhere. And. Um, so that was a challenge, but then the following year I went to Miami, which was, that was like, a just, it was just a free beach party down in, so down the South Beach in uh, Miami, next to Ocean Drive. I think I found that more fun because, yeah, I could just turn up and it wasn't inside somewhere um, or it wasn't like, there wasn't security around. It was just a big free, literally a free beach party with thousands of screen breakers and they'd have like speakers on their shoulders. And there was like little mini parties all going around and yeah, that was, um, I think that was a, a sort of a fun year. Um, and then, yeah. And then the following year I went to the redneck mud park spring break weekend. So I wanted to continue the project, but instead of just focusing on these kind of pool parties and beach parties, I wanted to find something different. And, I, and a, a photography friend told me about these sort of mud park spring breaks and he sent me a video. <laughs> so then I was just thought that's like, it's literally, it's like people in monster trucks driving around, but with everything that happens at spring break, but in mud. And so, yeah, I went to the Redneck Mud Park spring break weekend and it was sort of, it went beyond its expectation or my expectations of what it was going to be like. And so I've turned that into just a separate thing because it's so different from spring break. And in a way, I think the, the name was, that it says it's the spring break weekend, but it's, it's very much a community of truckers who go there. And there are spring break people who go there for spring break, but it's more of just like, it's more of the community, a community of truckers. But it was pretty wild, actually. That you should, uh, park you should come and come and do a project up here, mate. There's plenty of uh, interesting people at certain times of the year. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, you def definitely get a good documentary photography project. Yeah, sounds good. Here. Cool. Well, coming coming to the end, really. As I, and I'm getting destroyed by mosquitoes, which is a good lesson for me on this first podcast outside because <laughs> I think just as the sun started to go, the mosquitoes are starting to get me. But um. Yeah, cool to cool to chat. And where can people find out more about you, like your your work? And can do you want to just just read out your yeah. you know your, your well, URL? Will, and anywhere else? I guess will hartleycom is my website. My Instagram yes. is William is, is at William Hartley, and I've got a Twitter as well. I can't, I don't even, I think my Twitter is will underscore Hartley. I think, but I haven't really used it in a while. But it's, yeah, Instagram or or my website is probably the best place to go. Um, and then, yeah, most, yeah, most of my projects are on there. My website, I'd say, I'd say my website is probably best place to go rather than Instagram. Um, so yeah, will cool. Yeah. Anything else? Any, no, anything else? Will's... Anything else I can give you, Matt? <laughs> no, that's, that's good. Good, mate. Cheers for joining. I'm glad to see you're, you're able to get back to work and, and I hope everything's kind of good and safe over there. But, um, yeah, man, we'll, um, yeah, we shall all connect on our family call at some point that's kind of seems to have ceased i think now but yeah yeah um, <laughs> yeah well thanks for having me on match it's quite yeah it's been a nice chat to chat about the work and chat about stuff yeah definitely awesome cool all, all right, right mate well uh, yeah enjoy your day and I'll, I'll speak to you soon all right speak to you soon matt appreciate it right, bye-bye bye. it's very brightly colored and it's very loud and it's fun for a while this is 1095